Chapter 6 Toad's Adventures Chained up in his dungeon, all alone, Toad shed bitter tears and abandoned himself to despair. This is the end of everything, he wept. How can I ever hope to be free again? And for several weeks he refused all the food brought to him by the grim and ancient gaoler. But the Gola had a daughter, a good-hearted girl, who helped her father sometimes in the prison. She was very fond of animals, and she said to her father one day, I can't bear to see poor Toad so unhappy and getting so thin. Let me look after him, she pleaded. Do what you like, said the Gola. So that very day the Gola's daughter went to see Toad, to talk to him and to tempt him with food. At first he would not be comforted, but when she brought him tea and very thick, hot, buttered toast, he started eating again. And they had many interesting talks together. She told him she had an elderly aunt was the washerwoman at the prison. She suggested that if Toad gave this lady a little money she might be willing to let him have one of her dresses and an old bonnet so that he could escape from the castle. And so next morning the girl brought her aunt to Toad's cell. <coughs> Shaking with laughter the gaoler's daughter helped Toad to dress up in the cotton print gown, arranged the shawl and tied on the washerwoman's bonnet, all of which her aunt had brought in a bundle of washing. Then the pair of them tied the old lady up to make it look as though the daring Toad had overpowered her to steal the clothes. With quaking heart, but firm footsteps, Toad made his way through the castle. The warders and the soldiers joked as they saw the stout little figure in familiar clothes go walking by. Every door and every gate was open for him. Even so, it seemed hours before he crossed the last courtyard, and then he was walking across the drawbridge, free, dizzy with the success of his daring exploit. Toad made his way to the railway station. He went to the booking office to buy a ticket and found to his horror that he had left all his money and belongings behind in the prison. He pleaded with the booking clerk, but he was pushed out of the way. In despair again, he wandered down the platform to where the train was waiting. He told the engine driver all his troubles. Luckily, the engine driver was a very kind man. He told the poor washerwoman that if she washed a few shirts for him, she could have a lift in his cab. Toad was very thrilled as the, tra as the train sped along. But after a while, the engine driver said they were being followed by another engine. And it's crowded with warders and policemen, he exclaimed so he slowed down enough for the toad to jump off as they passed through a thick wood. He rolled down an embankment and scrambled into the wood. He watched his train get up speed again and disappear. Then the pursuing engine roared past, everybody shouting, Stop! Stop! Toad had a hearty laugh for the first time since he was thrown into prison. The Further Adventures of Toad Toad slept that night in the hollow of a tree. He woke up next morning because his toes were cold. But he soon forgot about that when he remembered that he was free. He had all the world to himself that early summer morning and he strolled along the lanes until he came to a canal. A 
round a bend in the canal came plodding a large horse drawn a horse towing a barge steering the barge was a large stout woman a nice morning ma'am she called to toad as the draw as the barge drew level with him toad replied politely and said that he was a poor washerwoman trying to get back to her home near toad hall toad hall answered the barge woman why i'm going that way toad's luck again thought toad as he stepped lightly on board the barge i always come out on top but there was a surprise in store for toad this time you can get on with my washing for me said the barge woman Toad's back was aching and his wet paws were getting all crinkly. The bad woman suddenly laughed. Why, you can't wash at all, she said, and looked at him closely. Well, I never. A horrid, nasty toad and in my clean barge. And she threw Toad over the side. Toad hit the water with a splash and a splutter, but he managed to swim to the steep bank and climb up. He was very cross and looking for revenge. Then he saw the horse which was towing the barge. He ran after it, unfastened the tow rope, jumped up on the horse's back and went off at a gallop. He, he had travelled a long way when he came to a gypsy caravan where a man was sitting by a fire of sticks. From the pot which was hanging over the fire came the most delicious smells. Toad just sat there and sniffed hungrily. Want to sell that horse of yours? asked the gypsy. Sell this beautiful horse? exclaimed Toad. Oh no, it's out of the question. But the gypsy continued to bargain with him and offered fifty pence. Toad thought carefully. He was very hungry and he had no money. Look here, gypsy, he said. If you give me 75 pence, plus as much as I can possibly eat out of that pot, you shall have my horse. So it was arranged, and Toad stuffed and stuffed and kept asking for more. After he had finished eating, Toad set off for the road once more, very pleased with himself. He saw a car approaching and stood in the middle of the road to stop it. But, oh dear, as it slowed down, he recognised it as the car he had stolen. Poor Toad collapsed in despair in the road. Toad thought that the people in the car would send for the police. But no, all they saw was a poor old washerwoman lying in the road. And they decided to take her to the nearest village. So they lifted Toad into the car, and as they moved off, his courage began to revive. And when they had gone a little way, he asked if he could drive the car. How they laughed. Let the old lady try. Toad eagerly took the wheel and drove off, very slowly at first, then faster and faster, and when he started boasting what a clever toad he was, they realised their mistake and tried to grab him. The car went through a hedge and they all landed in a muddy pool. Chapter 8 Like Summer Tempest Came His Tears Toad ran off as fast as he could go, chased by the men from the car. He was looking back over his shoulder when splash he ran straight into the river breathless and spluttering he floated along a little way with the stream and presently he saw a big dark hole in the river bank it was rat's house and rat was there to rescue him As soon as Toad was indoors, he started boasting to Rat about his adventures. Toad, said Rat gravely, you go upstairs and take off that old cotton rag 
and put on some of my clothes. Now stop swaggering and arguing. I'll have something to say to you later. Toad washed and changed his clothes and stood looking at himself in the mirror with pride and pleasure. Feeling much better, he went downstairs and ate a large lunch prepared by Rat. When they had both finished eating, Rat told him how the stoats and the weasels had taken over Toad Hall. I'll jolly well see about that, said Toad, grabbing a stick and marching rapidly down the road to Toad Hall. But when he got to the front gate, a yellow ferret with a gun suddenly popped out and fired at Toad. Bang! And a bullet whistled over his head. But Toad was not going to give in. He went back to Rat's house. He got out the boat and he rowed up the river towards Toad Hall. All seemed peaceful and quiet until, crash, a great stone thrown from the bridge smashed through the bottom of the boat and it sank. Toad struggled back to tell Rat all about it and Rat prepared a big supper for him. Just as they finished, there was a knock at the door, and there was Mr. Badger. He solemnly shook Toad by the paw. This is a poor homecoming, he said. Unhappy Toad. A little while later, more arrived too, and they talked about the situation. Badger said, the stoats are on guard at every point. It's quite useless to think of attacking the place. They're too strong for us. That's it. It's all over. Then it's all over, sobbed Toad. I shall never see my dear Toad Hall any more. Cheer up, Toady, cried Badger encouragingly. I'm going to tell you a secret. There is an underground passage from the river bank that leads right into the middle of Toad Hall and there's a banquet there tomorrow night. We shall creep out quietly, cried Mole. With pistols and swords, shouted Rat. And whack em and whack em, cried Toad in ecstasy. Next morning, Toad slept till late. When he did come down to breakfast, he found that Rat was collecting swords and pistols. The badger said that all they would need was sticks once they got into Toad Hall. It's as well to be on the safe side, said Rat. Then Mole came in. He told them that he had been up to Toad Hall, dressed in the old washerwoman's dress. He had spoken to the guards and told them that all the animals were going to attack Toad Hall from the outside. Oh, you silly ass, Mole, cried Toad. You've been and spoilt everything. But Badger could see the sense in what Mole had done. Good Mole, he said approvingly. This made Toad a bit jealous especially because he could not make out what it was that Mole had done that was so clever. So Mole took him outside and made Toad tell him about all his adventures from beginning to end. Chapter 9 The Return of Ulysses when it began to grow dark, they all assembled in Rat's parlour, and Rat gave each one his sword and pistols. But Badger just laughed good-humouredly. I'm going to do all I've got to do with this here stick, he said. When they were ready, Badger took a lantern and led them along by the river and then into a hole in the river bank. Mole and Rat followed silently, but when it came to Toad's turn, of course, he managed to slip and fell into the water. 
He was hauled out by his friends, but Badger was very cross. A little while later, they were creeping along the secret passage, which was dark and cold and damp. Todd was hurrying to keep up with the others when he bumped into Rat, who bumped into Mole, who fell over. Badger thought they were being attacked from behind, and he was, and he very nearly shot Toad with his pistol. After that, Rat kept a firm grip on Toad's shoulder to keep him out of trouble. And so they groped and shuffled along the secret passage until they came to a trap door. Badger said, Now boys, all together. They found themselves in the pantry with only a door between them and the banqueting hall. They could hear the weasels cheering and singing. Badger cried, Follow me! And he flung the door wide open. My, what a squealing and squeaking and screeching filled the air. Mole had gone outside to deal with the sentries. It's all over, he reported back. They had been expecting attack from outside, but as soon as they heard the shrieks and yells inside the hall, they threw down their rifles and fled. They've all disappeared by now, and I've got their rifles. And so the four friends sat down to a great supper of chicken and jelly and trifle. After all this excitement, the four animals continued to be friends. They would often take a stroll together in, together in the wild wood, and it was pleasing to see how the mother weasels would bring out their young ones and point them out. There goes the great Mr. Toad and the gallant Water Rat and the famous Mr. Mole, they would say. And when their children were naughty, they would tell them that the terrible grey badger would come and get them if they didn't behave themselves. Which was a little unfair on Badger, because he was rather fond of children. But it never failed. I hope you enjoyed that story.